What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Kiss Capades podcast and today I have a very special guest with me. I mean, we just started talking yesterday and he's already on the podcast. He's skipped like so many other people, but I mean, I'll tell you why the priority is there and the crazy amazing thing that he's doing. So I'll just let him introduce himself and then you know we'll just take it from there okay yeah well thanks john yeah um so yeah as as uh, my name is sam uh, jetwa yeah and um yeah like john says i gave him a, a call out of the blue yesterday um having been referred to to him by a friend of mine yeah and Santa Santa. i hope they say good things about me uh yeah average average no, <laughs> no of course yeah but it's very very yeah amazing yeah. things about you yeah hence a phone call and here we are today is uh, sitting down and uh yeah, having a chat with you. Having a chat. So, um, just if you can highlight um, a bit of what you do to people, yep, for a living or what you do on your day to day. So, um, my day to day is yeah. basically um, I have my own business. Yeah. And uh, it's a food and beverage company called the Kenyan Good Food Company. Uh huh. We are a food solutions business that uh, sort of works in mainly prepackaged foods mm-hmm. and we, we cater for institutions so we do a lot of work with the people like the US Embassy we have uh, some, some outlets within the UN okay. um, and we also own Seven Seafood and Grill which is at ABC Place oh um, yeah how did they forget about that yeah the funny thing um, I do reviews and I've never done never, one there well we need to change that that's changing. It's down. It's restaurant week. Yeah, 100%. Nairobi restaurant week's on uh, for, for the next 10 days. So, yeah, come yeah. down and and, uh, and and give it a whirl. I got you. I got that, you. I got you. No, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, um, so, um, so, yeah, that's what we do. So, apart from that, let's now go to the fun side. Yep. What keeps, what pushes your adrenaline? What? Let's talk about that and then how you're doing, you're doing it slightly differently from what other people are doing. Yeah. So I have I was born and brought up here in Kenya, right? In Kenya, yeah. So in yeah, Kenya. for those so, people yeah. start saying that you know, I mean, is he Kenya? Is he not <laughs> Kenya? He's telling you, born yeah. and bred in Kenya. Born and bred in Kenya. So you know Swahili? Kabisa. Ah, sour. Sour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but but we can't <laughs> do Swahili because the audience is broad. So let's just <laughs> keep okay, stick well, to English for no, now. No, no, no problem. No yeah. problem. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your hobby. So, so is yeah, it a hobby? It's it's it is a, yeah, it's a hobby. It's okay. a hobby which I would love to. I think if you dial, dialed it back, I would have loved to have turned it into a career. But it's it's very difficult in this part of the world to do that. Uh-huh. Um, but I think like a lot of Kenyans growing up, we grew up with motorsport, uh, the safari rally, yeah. all that sort of stuff, uh, motocross, etc., etc. So uh-huh. that's where my passion lies is in is in um, motorsport. Yeah. Um, so I've decided to jump back into. Oh wait, before you proceed, did you want sugar on that? I actually wanted some sweetener, but it's fine. <laughs> my apologies. I told him that I don't need that on the frame. So it's yeah, just problem. yeah. yeah. So uh huh. Yeah. What what were you saying? Um, yeah. So just sort of saying, my my um, my passion lies in rallying. Yeah. And um, my dad. Well, I'll take you through the history, I suppose. But yeah, I I am I'm jumping back into rallying in Kenya. Yeah. And um, there's. Why are you doing it when? I was doing it You're before. Young. I was doing it um, when I was. So I came back to Kenya after university and all that sort of stuff. And I did in 2003. I really got into rallying here. Okay. And that was I was the first person to do the classic East African. Uh, I can't speak today. The classic, classic East, East, East African Africa. Safari Rally. Okay. Which was the first edition of it was back in 2003, and that was to commemorate the. Um, I think it was the 50th or the 60th. My, my memory is a bit hazy. Okay. Commemoration of the of the rally. Okay. So uh, we got together, me and an old friend of mine, and we we entered the rally on a complete shoestring budget. We basically scrimped and saved money from wherever we could get it. Yeah. And we did it in the the most standard 504 you've ever seen. It was basically, I think it's a taxi now somewhere. In a Nairobi. 504. A 504. Pleasure. 504. But it must have been souped up like crazy. No, 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 no. We didn't have the money to soup it up. So I so was you were just I was 23. Oh, so you just but you were just doing like participation you really weren't concerned about tracing and time and everything no no it was very much let's just enter this thing uh-huh. for fun let's see what we can do uh-huh. and uh, yeah and, and 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 get on with it basically just uh-huh. get around finish uh-huh. and that would be a feat in itself because it was 10 days and 5,000 kilometers oh, okay so um, can we have some sugar for here? Sweet. Sweet. And then, yeah. yeah and then you can take it off the 
So yeah, my apologies about no that, problem. guys. No, no. Yeah. So um, yeah. So, so I, I, I'll just jump back. So we we, we started. We ended. You know, that's when I started rallying. We did this bloody rally, which was um, in the most standard car on the place of the planet. As I was sort of saying, we got like standard road tires from one company. We had standard shock absorbers on it. I think the only things that we really did to the car back then was we had to put in a roll cage and yeah. early seats, seat belts, all oh, the safety yeah, gear. Oh yeah, at least the safety gear for everything. Yeah. That had to be done. Yeah. And and in the end, we had a lot of problems, but we got round and we, we, we managed to kind of finish and we came stone last, but we finished. You came, Whereas, we became last. Yeah, we, we came last. There's <laughs> no problem. However, yeah. uh, what people won't see from the video uh, yeah. or from this is that I uh, use a wheelchair um, yeah. because I um, broke my back when I was 15. Yeah. Um, so in an accident, just when you're 15, when I was 15 years old, yeah, I broke my back. Okay. So that was in a car accident, not far from where we're sitting right now. Um, Wait, what? Just here on Langata South Road. Langata Road. Yeah, Langata South. So going down oh. towards uh, Giraffe Centre down there. Oh yeah, yeah. So I broke my back then, and that made me uh, basically meant that I lost the use of my legs. So I became paralysed at the age of 15. And so I am since 15 now. I'm I've just turned some age uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what you know I used to be excited about saying my age until I got past 25 and then I started realizing oh shit I'm actually getting old <laughs> I've left 25 a long time ago <laughs> no. I've, I'll be here I've been in my chair for 25 years wow so do the maths on that I don't want to do the math because I might put my math out as well. So you know, <laughs> let's just chill on that for now. <laughs> but okay, yeah. so the most important thing is like, um, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out because at 15 you're still a teenager, right? Yeah. You used to maybe like you had a, maybe a whole different sport. You had completely different hobbies and everything that you're doing then. But how was it like just to transition? You know, like just not just physically, but even like just psychologically. Yeah. For you to be able to adapt to this new, like, whole lifestyle that you're not even used to, because I'm just guess everything is different. Yeah, everything, everything. Um, is and I think you have to be, you have to have a very strong mind first of all to be able to switch back. Or just yeah. go on with like you know this life like you know uh, mm. considering like you know I'm not I don't have any use of my legs anymore. Mm. Yeah, um, I, you're, you're completely right. What I think, personally, well, I was very lucky. Yeah. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that uh, I was able to, to. We had insurance, everything like that, uh, so I was able to be looked after very well and get the right care that I needed and the right rehabilitation. That's physio. Physio and I mean, you know, just everything. It's not just physio actually, it was physio being in the right environment so that you understand your new situation, your new condition, how to deal with it. I was in a, I was transported to a hospital in the UK where they uh, basically, um, it was a spinal unit. So there was guys in there who were in a way worse situation than I was. So yeah. kind of, in a way, that's a good position to be in because you see. Because now you start seeing it, looking at it, and then you're like, yo, at least, you I'm know, not, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, at least I can do A, B, C, and D. It's not that. 100%. I'm one of the lucky ones. I was guys who can't use their arms, for example, or their legs. So yeah. I've got, at least I've got that. Yeah. Um, and then when I came back here, when I came back to school, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I missed a whole year of school, but I was still kept in the same class at school with all my mates. Yeah. Um, you know, I have two um, exceptional brothers who are a little bit crazy and wouldn't let me not do what they were doing. So yeah, and you, know, you still kind of like want to do the same thing because that's what you're used to. Yeah. And I'm 100%. guessing even after a while, like in your head, you actually forget about what happened to you, and you just like. I, I think that's exactly you've nailed it there. It's yeah. You you basically are put in, in a situation where you you don't even. Like if you meet me now, like you've met me now for the first time, if you, yeah. most people I meet after say to me that after 10 minutes, they've even forgotten that I'm in a chair. Uh, no, like right now, I've forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, 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 until we're just speaking about it, I, I can just see how clear your mind is and everything. Because to me, I, I mean, I just, I just think at times, 
It can be tricky. I think maybe let's say in general, just in Africa, it it can be portrayed like maybe is it like I don't know whether I can say like a stigma or something. Yeah. You can get like consciously. You can get in your head. Or just from how people like how you talk to someone, somebody can pick it up. Completely. But like right now, like just how you've said it, like even for me, I keep like I can't. I can't like if we're just talking yeah. and you're next to me, I can't like. You, you yeah, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't even notice it. It's it's a perception. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think I, again, I'll, I'll refer back to saying I was really lucky with my family. My parents mm. were were phenomenal. My dad and my mom were. Um, I'm, I'm, amazing yeah uh, and also you know although they worried they yeah. still gave me the room and uh, freedom to go and make mistakes break things yeah just you do know, your thing myself, just do your do whatever thing. right go yeah. and do your thing right yeah um, whereas a lot of I think uh, you'll find in places like Africa or even in India and Asia it's shamed it's people are hidden away when it happens they don't know how to deal with it yes yeah. it means that the individual doesn't get the confidence to actually yeah. continue with their life yeah so that's, and that's what i'm saying lucky. like even from just how you're talking and everything it gives off a very different and just normal energy because it just shows like you know i mean it just shows like mentally you've already taken care of like um maybe things that you had to go through and now you're just at a safe place now you're good yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but so. I need, I mean I'm just asking this. Yeah, sure. Um cuz I'm just trying to still figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um do you still ever think about like maybe you shouldn't have done this for this to happen or you, do you look at it as um everything happens for a reason? I, I think you'll it's it's a little bit of a little bit of both. You'll always sit there and kind of go, "What if? If it didn't happen, where would I be? What would I be yeah. doing? Would I? Would I be the same person as I am today?" It's mm -hmm. always a question I ask myself. Would I be uh, more arrogant, less arrogant? Would I be nicer? Would I be meaner? Would I? I don't know. Why you, know? you arrogant at fifteen? Uh, well, I don't Why know. If I, if I, if I, <laughs> I was definitely cheeky. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but a fifteen-year-old is still a fifteen-year-old yeah. at the end of the day. So I mean. For every parent, they know 15, 16, that's when now kids get a bit crazy. Yeah, I think um, I had to grow up very quickly. Yeah, um, I had to grow up very, now very your quickly. sense of responsibility yeah. has to change because things, mm. um, basically for you to adapt, you have to do, like, your mind and body has to do twice the work mm. in order to come in a situation, in a position where now I'm comfortable doing this. Yeah, to adapt yeah. to this new environment and lifestyle. Yeah, you're completely right. And yeah. I think what's actually ended up happening is I've, I've kind of done a full circle. Yeah. I had to grow up really quick. And yeah. now I'm becoming a kid again. And <laughs> when I see like most of my other friends who are like very serious and families, and you oh, know, I'm, yeah. I'm still running around being a little bit of a lunatic. So, I mean, oh that's, yeah, that's so that's you're, you're thinking of like, oh, <laughs> I've done maybe, my time. Maybe now. I should start, you know, thinking about chilling out settling or just doing this and that and that's uh, i mean no, 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 no. yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see there's still <laughs> much more stuff to do um <laughs> so yeah but, yeah so so that's what happened so i've i use this uh wheelchair. i use a manual wheelchair so i push myself everywhere yeah i drive uh you know i have a, a modified car which is uh -huh. an automatic with a hand control system put in so it's just a you pull to accelerate, you push the lever down to brake. Yeah. It still has the pedals in, so if you want to drive it, you can jump in and drive it. Mm -hmm. uh, is it like the um, the ones the like you? type thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish it, it was. You can get it's those, not, but it's they not. cost a fortune. Oh, they're crazy expensive. It, it's, this is Africa proof. Yeah. It's just pieces, oh, it's of, been, it's pieces oh, of metal. Was it made here or shipped? No, it was made in the, so you buy the kit. Um, I actually bought the car in the UK and mm -hmm. had it fitted there. And then I, and then I brought the car in. in. But I've had many cars that I've bought here and just put this put the system in myself. Yeah. It's very simple. It's very basic metal rods with uh, adjustments on, mm -hmm. with a lever that you pull and you push that sits underneath the steering wheel and sort of comes out from the steering wheel. You pull it to accelerate, push it down to brake. Um, uh, and the reason we got that was first of all, I'm yeah. not even still a good driver right <laughs> now. <laughs> so, so it's not like I'm an expert at this. Once you start telling me like pushing, actually I can't drive a manual car. Wow. Okay. Well. So you see, so you see, when you're having that conversation, wow. with me just know that I'm not that good at driving. So I used but to I, steal a manual car, my dad's pickup. Mm -hmm. When my little brother was doing motocross, I yeah. would steal dad's pickup. Yeah. 
I put it in third, started off the starter motor, and then used the crutch to drive the car around the... Oh. Yeah. And cha you change gear without... So that's where the cheeky part so comes in, where, and yeah, you yeah. were just making, ca causing chaos in there. Causing, <laughs> causing a little bit of chaos. Okay, so that, but, yeah. was, that was like a flashback, right? So, a little bit back to well, but more the recent, recent, yeah. maybe probably years. Did you pick Rally up after like your accident happened like you when you're much older i'm guessing yeah because so now you have like a light a proper license and everything yeah yeah, yeah. so what happened what, what i did was it's always been an interest of mine yeah uh, again family interest dad used to cool. do do mm -hmm. stuff with with rally mm -hmm. so and you just mentioned your brother motocross now that's like super extreme yeah little bro did motocross me and older bro were Insane. never allowed to do motocross not funny. allowed? No, we weren't allowed. Mum mum was petrified of us getting hurt on motorbikes. Oh, she we, was like, I can only have one son do can, that. Yeah. Not all of you getting The little one is dispensable. Ah. Let's just be honest. <laughs> In any family, you know, it's just, that's just, yeah, it's yeah, fine. It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, we played rugby and all that kind of stuff. So uh, mum's like, I've been to the hospital enough with stitches and broken uh, things. Ah, I, I can. Yeah. That's the worst. If you have like three boys and motocross, rugby. Yeah, well, Kieran, Stealing cars. Yeah, well, Kieran yeah. was Kenya rugby. He played rugby for Kenya. Um, oh, wow. My little brother was motocrossed in. Yeah, he was. He was. A, he was a junior. He, he was. Quite, yeah, he was all right. He was a little JJ. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. so then coming forward, what ended up happening was I had always wanted to rally. It's just it's, it's very. You know, it's got it's an expensive sport. Um, yeah. There's no no two ways about it. Yeah. And when the op opportunity came up to do the classic safari in 2003, yeah. uh, me and a university friend were literally sitting in his father's uh, house in the UK one day and went. Should we try and do this rally? And John, his father, said to us, if you two clowns can pull this off, I'll give you £10,000 towards it. Ooh. Which back then was, a, you know, that was, yeah, that yeah. was pretty much 80% of our budget. Yeah, yeah, So, so he's actually sorted you out. Sorted Even if you out. don't have, like, sponsors, you're, you're basically, you're good. Well, however, no, he didn't give us the money until literally two days before <laughs> the rally started. Oh. We had to pull it off, and then he would give us the cash. That oh, was the he'd deal. want to see that you've committed. We've committed. We've done oh, okay, it. Okay. So we did. We went. We managed to pull some cash together. From we were both working, put some money in. Tim, in fairness to him, was here in Kenya. He was running around getting sponsorships from various companies who were putting in like hundred thousand bob, fifty thousand bob, whatever. Yeah. And we got it done. All sponsorship in kind. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's where the first rally came off. And from there, you know, in order for me to get a license to rally in Kenya because there was nobody else who had ever done it in a wheelchair before um they there was is no there any other person right now there is right now uh, mm -hmm. and fair credit to him he does an amazing job nikhil sachanya and nikhil does the knrc so if anybody out there is watching the knrc i would say uh please get out there support nikhil he's an amazing driver um mm -hmm. he also had an accident where he broke his back I think coming back from a rally, uh, no, Nikhil was on a was on a bike, sorry, um, or a quad, sorry, or a quad. Uh, and he broke his back on a quad. Nikhil, wow. correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah. So it is like um, so. Sorry, yeah. yeah you sorry, I know. I want you to finish that before I I say like how. Well, as long as you're still doing like a hobby or something, yeah. it, there's still so many dangers to it, even though you're taking like safety precautions. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So there's very there's a it is quite a safe sport. Okay, but, but yeah, it is safe. It's very safe. Oh, I think because like how you mentioned, his situation was also very different. It was like on a quad bike, right? He was, uh, yeah, uh, he was on a quad bike and he was doing um, or a motorbike. I can't remember exactly. So again, like, excuse me if I'm wrong. But here. maybe. But he had an accident. He came off his bike and he broke his back. Yeah. So that's how he ended. But up. he still like you know managed to hop back on the wagon and he's still like doing the. He's in it. He's back in there. He's uh, he's doing uh, uh, this drives a Mitsubishi Evolution, and he does uh, he does a really good job. In fact, last year he won his category, which was the specially modified vehicles, wow. uh, special purpose wow. vehicles, whatever it's called. Wow. So uh -huh. he's doing an amazing job, and it's great to see somebody else in a chair mm. in motorsport in this country and actually doing well at it. So. Um, you know, we chat mm -hmm. occasionally and yeah, like I that. was just about to ask so. that. Okay, and w when it comes to like, you know, cause I'm guessing like racing and rally, it's all about time, time, time yeah. and everything. What's your time like? In terms of, are you talking about in terms of during the rallying or are you talking about in terms of your general lifetime as in how you, how much, how do you manage your time during? No, 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 no. Um, like in a rally. Right? Oh, in a rally. How's, like how's, how's like your performance? Wow. How would you rate your performance? Um, because I'm uh, guessing, like, if you say, like, you're a rally driver, 
the first thing that somebody comes like what's his time com in comparison to like um i think th so th like so i said i don't know so many rally drivers yeah and i know the classics like you ian duncan and patrick njiru and it's just unfortunate like i was saying that any other time i've been going to the rally it's because we were going to drink yeah so we yeah, didn't even 100%. know about like the participants and stuff but that was back then so now even if i'm going for a rally i'd take keen interest because i'd be like who's this yeah yeah look i think it's also rallying is going to get a lot more interesting here now if we get the safari rally back you know mm -hmm. we'll get the world rally championship drivers back here and it will be a big thing that uh, you know mm -hmm. but uh if you ask me about my time so it's all about what car you drive and what class you're in mm -hmm. and um so what I, I ended up doing was, I can't give myself a benchmark time. I'd like to think I is, can set a relatively uh, respectable time. I wouldn't say I'm an- Would you say you're good? I, I'm not gonna go, I would, I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. Yeah. I, I you're think, good. Yeah. well look, if, if you ask any of my friends, they'll say he's rolled more cars than he's had hot <laughs> breakfast. So <laughs> I'm trying, okay. at least you're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're crashing, you're trying, yeah. is the way what, I look what, at it. What do you n normally race in, what, what so, car? Now I've I've just bought a um, a rally rate car, so I'm actually not doing the same sort of stage rallying that uh, you're talking about with the, like the Kenya National Rally Championship. Yeah, that's very different. That's what Ian Duncan, what Ian also does rally rate, but that's what your sort of classics like Ian, yeah. uh, Flash Tundo, Alistair Kavanagh, mm. you know, Baldy Chugger, on, mm. all those guys are doing. You know, Patrick and Juru. Yeah, what we're doing is more Dakar. So if you're familiar with the Dakar Rally, um, mm. off-road rally uh, rate. Oh more like deserty exactly so your kind of environment and stuff yeah you're you're basically it's a mixture of you'll use some tracks some roads yeah you'll use goat tracks you'll use riverbeds you'll you'll it's what they call off piste yeah which means you you'll be going between point a and point b mm -hmm. uh using a gps so you have two coordinates between a and b yeah and you can use whatever route you want to get from a to b and that there's no road necessarily you're driving across oh. bush so and basically Desert, in such scenarios like you don't have like um well, what do you call them like the roadside uh spectators so most likely spectators are just towards like the start and the finishing point yeah they're, they're actually getting better with that so you have start and finishing point and then they're actually putting in spectator points so mm -hmm. in the areas where either you know where it's safe yeah. If there's an off-piste area, they'll sort of tape it out and sort of tell spectators to stay on one side uh -huh. so that they can actually see cars doing stuff like driving down a riverbed when you're not, you know, yeah. which, is, which is very, very different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the car I've bought is a, it's, it doesn't look like anything that you would have seen on the road. It is a buggy that is uh, a hybrid or a, or a, a, its original form was a, was a Prado, was a Toyota Prado. Uh. So it's a diesel turbo diesel engine. It's like it's, it's a big car though, right? It's a short, yeah, it's the short wheelbase actually. So it's, it's not like big at all. Because if that it's quite Prado, uh, like look, now yeah. the wheels probably are. It's quite, I'll show you a picture. The if shocks. You want. I, yeah, I yeah. Share a picture. I'll you definitely. Want to see and and uh, you, can, you will. You can share yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys. I definitely. Think that would be the thing. Yeah. Um, it, it literally looks like a moon buggy. Mm. It's a mad little thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily the quickest car in the world, but mm -hmm. it is. Hopefully, being a Toyota, it should be uh, fairly reliable, which it should, yeah, yeah. is key. That's mm. the key. So yeah. for me, I want I need a car because mm. of my Navigator is unlike another crew. That's the other challenge we face, basically. Yeah. Other crews will jump out of the car, both the driver and the Navigator, to change a puncture, and they can change a puncture in you know, sort of five minutes, three oh, to five minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm stuck in the car because I don't have my chair with me. So he has to do like basically the whole... He, he does everything. And probably fit. Oh, so okay. Alan, Alan. Now I'm thinking, even if it's lifting and stuff, he has to do like yes, basically everything. everything. Yeah. Wow. So what would normally happen is you and I, if you were, you were, we were in a car together, we'd jump out. You would yeah. be loosening the, the wheel. I'd be yeah, getting the yeah. spare tire out. Basically, uh, I'd do the jack it, and, uh, and it use the It would be. It would take if we're the two of us. It would take us half the time. Exactly. That one person would take because it's yeah. co it's all coordination. Coordinated. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing, and also if the car stops, you know, you know, you sometimes you need some, you need you need two people to get the thing going a little bit quicker. Yeah. So reliability is key for me. True. Reliability is key. True. Um, so yeah, so that's the so the first rally raid that we're actually entering mm -hmm. is um, I should explain. I've had this hiatus from rallying. Mm -hmm. um, my last rally that I did was navigating for Rob Hillier in the Safari Rally in 2013, 2015. 
2015, three so years I've, ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I've I've had a I've had a gap, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and rally raid was was looks really like a lot of fun, and it's it's uh, looks like it's going to be a an interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. And I bought the car, so I have to use it. So uh, now we're going to get out we there and give it a whirl. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, we've talked like through these different like just uh, portions of like from how you from your childhood, uh, how you got into rally. Yeah, your cars. You haven't like really mentioned your time so we won't go with that we we won't put emphasis on that <laughs> let's just say he's let's just say he's good he's okay at what he does so let's talk about the event that's sure. coming like uh this weekend right yeah, next weekend next weekend yeah that you're actually tenth. now participating in. Yeah. yeah but we're saying this weekend because i'm posting it true you're posting yeah. on monday <laughs> yeah sorry yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that event because uh, I don't know how rally works. Like what I'm saying, like the whole uh, rally culture was completely different from like when I was a kid. Yeah. And it like sort of, I think, faded slightly down or it's not as, uh, can I say it's not as big or it's not uh, glorified as much as it used to be? Yeah, you're completely Because, like, it, it used to be, like, a big thing. It all, I it think massive. we almost had, like, you know, uh, some school days off to go and watch the rally or something. Yeah, it's it, it was massive. Uh, yeah, and, and people being right. flagged off in KICC and everything. We used to go for those things, like, when we were kids, but they're not cer that ceremonious anymore. I don't know. It's, it lost its, yeah, unfortunately, it lost its um, its appeal when, it, uh, when, when we lost the, the world championship. Oh, so you that's don't have the big names like Colin McRae and Carlos yeah. Sainz and all those, you know, Joachim Kankin and all these super famous guys were coming out here, Tommy yeah. Macken and Sebastian Loeb. Yeah. Now, um, so it went through a lull period, but hopefully that's on the way up now because mm -hmm. there's a lot more different. I mean, now in Kenya, if you're really interested in in, in motorsport, uh, you'll find it out there. It's, I think advertising is is also to to blame. They're not necessarily marketing true. as well. True. True. Um, and oh, it used to be everywhere. It was everywhere. Like, I remember to going everywhere. to the bookstore. You bought the book. You bought yeah. everything. I used to have stickers. I remember I used to have stickers and all that stuff. Yeah. Because now that you started mentioning it, like even some names that you've mentioned, I had already forgotten about them. Yeah. But back then, those were the names like I used to be. And we even used to make like toy cars and yeah. put like you know names of rally drivers and stuff. Now with all those flashbacks are coming back. Yeah. Yeah, but I had brilliant. even forgotten about them. <laughs> yeah. That's so, uh, so since that's mm. not as uh, it used to be back in yep. the day, um, what 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 do you think? Like you guys are doing it differently, maybe and stuff. Because and I know also the, one of the reasons uh, you reached out to me is because about like this whole digital, the whole digital space. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, which. I, th I think, like me, yeah. I think there are a lot of old dinosaurs out there who don't really understand the space yeah. and how to utilize it properly. So hopefully, um, more of more of this kind of stuff and more of the competitors getting involved with um, people like yourself yeah. will hopefully, you know, spur on the organizers and the the committees and the federation to actually yeah. use the space a little bit better. Because even now. That I'm thinking about it. I've never like s I can't remember the last time I saw like a pop up uh, mm. ad or just a video of uh, rally rally cars and you know like they used to. Yeah. Because now we have Instagram and all these social platforms. You'd think it might be easier to just put out like content because then it had to be like through a TV station. Yeah. Where this is approved and everything. But now everybody's on their phone. I can record, put a hashtag, you know, uh KCB rally, Nakuru rally or this, this and that. I can just put a hashtag. Somebody can see the picture, retweet, retweet, put on Insta stories, but I don't see those pop ups when it comes to rally. Yeah. But I see that to when it comes to Unfortunately, I had to say when it comes to like street racing and stuff, mm -hmm. I, you know, my people. <laughs> I think, I think you've, you've, well, I, I mean, 
my understanding of it would probably be something along the lines of the guys that are doing street racing, for example, yeah. are a lot younger and a lot, a lot. They're different. They're the, they're the. I hate to use this term, but they're the millennials. Yeah, so they understand this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah? Now, now th yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Because you guys are, are not on Twitter, you're not on Instagram. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we kind of are, but we don't know how to use it. <laughs> and um, I think include the guys, include yeah. the young people because they have the 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 adrenaline rush. They'd want to know how they can move probably to the professional I, I categories agree. inside. Because I think like their millennials are basically even like making money. I think they're able to actually capitalize, um, but they don't have like the mentors, I guess. I guess so. Yeah, there's, 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 there's that. There's also, I do just think that um, it's, it's to do rallying maybe in terms of, of, of your budget is a is a little bit of a step up from it's crazy street, street racing. It's, it's 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 not it's not it's not cheap mm. um but it also i think it just there's a lot more organizing uh there's a lot more logistics involved you know formalities, formalities that, yeah, yeah you have to go through a form, oh, you know yeah. you get your licenses oh, yeah. blah 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 but a rally is not just going to be you know kiambu road where yeah going. yeah so like, i'll tell you about this weekend yeah this weekend just to, to so to give you anyone and anyone who's out there i you know i would say if you're able to come down and watch it's a completely different sort of a rallying to street racing it's or, in nakuru order. right so no this this uh weekend's rally raid is so it's part of the kenya national rally raid championship uh -huh. um there are four confirmed rounds this year mm -hmm. um and we've just the first one is going to be in Naivasha, so it's on Kidong, Kidong Ranch. Uh, oh, yeah, so ah, opposite, ah, yeah. Op opposite Sopa Lodges. So yeah, you, yeah on Moi, Moi uh, South that, Lake. That Road. whole place is beautiful. Yeah, so um, you know, Sopa. Yeah, where, right. You'll see the Sopa Lodges sign. Yeah, exactly mm. opposite. I have to mention Sopa because they've been very good to us. And no, I, I, one of my, my, it's, my sponsors. It's so crazy because um, I came across Sopa last weekend because i was trying to get somebody in my podcast because they're doing a retreat from with people from uk okay. to kenya and they're gonna be hanging out at sopa so i was trying to ask them like yo can you come to my podcast or do i have to come to naivasha because my kit is like portable because mm. i'd really be interested to understand why i think it was a whole yoga thing and everything okay yeah, so I mean, Sopa Lodge. There's no, there's no shame to their plug. No. I mean, I've but noticed. You should, you I've should, noticed you them. should come and do a, a session next uh, weekend. Listen, at Sopa. I, I <laughs> want to. I would want to. But I'll put you know, you in just the, we can do it from it, the rally car. Oh my God! Don't, don't start getting me too excited, <laughs> man. But but let's see how it goes. We we can plan that for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the format is uh, Saturday, starting off at uh, the the uh, ranch house in Naivasha. Yeah. I think we start at around 10 in the morning, mm -hmm. but that's just the, the sort of like the ceremonial start. The actual action happens on Kidong Ranch, yeah. and the entrance to Kidong Ranch, like I said, is opposite the lodge there. Yeah. And what we're doing is uh, two on Saturday, it's a 30k loop twice, mm -hmm. and then on the Sunday, so we come in, we have a night, and then on the Sunday, uh, there's another longer loop, which I think is around 120k's, yeah. with a refueling point in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, so unlike a national championship rally, which is only one day now, and you can I see the cargo boom around once. Yeah. The great thing with this is it's a whole day out. It's really awesome for families as well. It's and like it's the old rallying. You can yeah. come, yeah. set up shop, yeah. do you know a Kroger or a barbecue, yeah. bring beers, sit under a tree. And that's what I'm drink, all about. Drink to your heart's content. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, what I'm all about. <laughs> Anybody um, who knows me, they know that's what I'm about. Awesome. And then you'll see all the cars. And the great thing with Rally Raid, it's not just cars. Yeah. So rally raid is cars, motorbikes, quads, and buggies. That's nice. So it's all That's sorts nice. of, and none of the cars are things that you most people have ever seen. So you've got people like um, other competitors, Ross and Mikey, and all these kind of guys, and these these cars from South Africa, especially mm. built purpose built rally raid vehicles called CRTs, super mm -hmm. powerful, mad cars. Yeah, cars like mine, modified Land Rovers, Range Rovers, uh, people on motorbikes, as I said. You know, it's so crazy because. You know, when people mention like all different cars, I start getting confused, right? Because mm -hmm. I told you I'm not that much into cars. But I have friends who are into cars so much. Uh, every single day, if you go to their house, they're watching just YouTube on modifications of engines. I have a friend who's always like building and rebuilding his engine every single day when I go to his house. Yeah. 
So I'm just thinking, like, if he was in this seat right now, oh, the questions that he would have for you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, unfortunately, I just don't know too many technicalities, but my interest is always there with anything that's techy gear yeah. and anything that's up to date that's actually happening. Okay, mm. that's brilliant. Well, yeah. you can, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you, actually. One thing about me is that yeah. I know a little bit about engines and mm -hmm. cars, but I am in no way, shape, or form uh, technically savvy. I'm not a mechanic or anything. Yeah. I understand. I know where the engine is. But if your car like, breaks down, you can fix it, right? I can, I can have an idea. What? I, I, yeah, 100%. I can get it kind of going again. Yeah. That's why I have a navigator who is oh, a mechanic. Oh, yeah, who's actually so also good Al's, at that. Al's job is out the car. You know how to make this thing get, <laughs> yeah. get it going, please, yeah. sir. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll leave you on the side of the road. Yeah, so yeah. So uh -huh. it's... Uh, no, no, I, I know my way around a little bit, but if you, if you pulled a... Mm -hmm. A unit out of a car and said, "This is broken. Fix it." Mm -hmm. That's that's not where I'm. I'm super strong. I know how to do the rest of it. But yeah. So now, since we're talking about that same event, uh, during our phone conversation, something came up to do with um, what was it? Uh, like sponsorships and stuff. Yeah. 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 You want to talk yeah. about that, or that's yeah. not something no, 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 that you want to put out there? Mm -hmm. I, I would, I'd love to put that out there. Yeah. So what, 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 what I'm, you know, obviously to do this, sport, we need, we need support. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm obviously, you know, as every driver out there is, and every motorbike rider is who wants to invo get involved with motorsport. Yeah. Uh, we're always looking for support to be able to do the, the um, do the rallies. So. Yeah. I'm, you know, we're all looking for sponsors and I'm actively looking for sponsors at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, again, you know, what we, we're looking at here is I'm trying to create a platform where using the digital space, really, yeah. I, I fully understand that nowadays going to, going to a company and asking them for money for me to go and have fun yeah. to stick a sticker on the side of a car. Mm -hmm. Is, is archaic it's not going to happen anymore you know nobody's going to give you that money yeah clients um, are clients are being too clever right now because they're always like mm -mm. okay what how much to do what exactly okay look if i went and asked somebody for you know uh two million shillings to do yeah. something or fifty thousand bob even to do something yeah um they're going to want to return and it's they okay, want to right. see like yeah where where's our money going where's our money going mm -hmm. now the money not doesn't necessarily re relate to sales i think yeah. that's also not a great view on marketing anymore is it's not it, it, yeah, eventually you want some sort of return. I think it's all about like now probably visibility makes more sense. Yeah. I think I think visibility 100 is what most visibility. people are looking for. Visibility, relevance. Yeah. Um, being basically growing your brand awareness, making staking brand relevant awareness. in people's yeah. minds, right? We want people to talk about you or just remember. Remember, remember, yeah. remember. Yeah. And then I also would like to look at it and doing uh, sort of my, my, my take on it is to give back, you know, we can use... Instagram, for example, we oh. can use Twitter and all those oh, sorts of things yeah. to do all sorts of things. Yeah, we can use it for product launches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can I'll, run. I'll tell you what. Just something just came, like on on the fly on my head. I don't know how the because like just like you've said, uh, when sponsors throw out like maybe X amount, X amount, I'd tell you what the what the Kiss Capades podcast can do. Yeah can do a bit of content for you i mean if we can That'd put like if we can put like a my stick among the sponsors i'm i'm down for that done what there we go there uh, we listen go. guys do you hear that that's the first that's the podcast first the first podcast to sponsor a rally there we Driver. go true 100 <laughs> that's wicked man Cheers, thank you very much yeah, yeah so i mean i and i'm just thinking that's like one of the ways you can always tap into the millennials, as as we're saying, because they're the ones sharing these pictures. They're the ones looking for this excitement and everything. And I know deep down, like people love rally and everything. But I think it's just because it's not put out there the way it used to be put. Yeah. And I think we can just bring it up if we bring the fun back to it. Yeah. But the fun comes in once people start seeing like more the visibility we're talking about it, yeah. it has to be there so, so what, I, what I'm hoping to offer sponsors is this and this is why I, you know speaking to people like yourself yeah. and, and looking for that support from, from this space actually yeah. is that if I've if, if I would like to grow my profile um, and through tapping into the millennials as you as you sort of yeah. 
they like being called millennials, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nobody, nobody, had, no, a nobody has a problem with that. Nobody has a problem with that. Because uh, I actually think they feel like it's cool because it separates them from from, 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 from the dinosaurs. From the dinosaurs. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, we can, if a dinosaur can become a millennial, that'd be epic. <laughs> Um, but no, what we're trying to do is if I yeah. can, if, if what, what, what I would like to offer as a potential sponsor is, is a return. So I'm, yes, going to come and ask you for whether it's sponsorship in kind, whether it's, it's, it's um, actual cash. Mm-hmm. I will then hopefully through these channels and as I say, if we tap into that market and, yeah. the, and the, the broader local market, especially for local sponsors and if we can go international with the international sponsors, is to get everyone sharing our pictures and buying into uh, the you know buying into the team as it were yeah getting involved with competitions if we run competitions if mm. there's product launches that sponsors would like to run through mm. that platform mm-hmm. and then similarly something I think that we're lacking here what I would love to do is give back to the companies internally mm. now, I don't oh, well, how does that work so you're gonna give my secret sauce away here, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay 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 <laughs> okay 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 we, we can we can hold on to that we can hold on to that yeah so there's something that i i feel that we could do through a sponsorship program yeah. especially in this country mm-hmm. given what you've said to me about where you used to come from with rallying yeah internally yeah. within companies we could offer them something that i think uh, it would increase the employee uh, value proposition right. massively Excellent. then don't mention that yeah, for now i'm not going to right now <laughs> um and the other thing is mm-hmm. i would i want to use it to do it there's there's the csr element to this as well and this is not um I'd, i'm not going to swear too much on here but Blowing no, you can you can say whatever you want to say on this podcast. Yeah, it's blowing smoke up somebody's rear end, so to speak, <laughs> is, yeah, is yeah. this, is that everyone talks about, oh, I'm going to be raising money for this charity or that charity. I'm not raising money for a charity yeah. it, because I, I, I just think if a, comp- if a company is going to raise money for a charity, why give me a million shillings and I'm only going to give 20% to a charity? They may as well give the full million to a charity. Yeah, yeah. makes so sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I do run a charge. So if I'm asking for sponsorship for Rhino Charge, uh, then I would say, look, that's going all to the sponsor. Yeah, we yeah. pay for the car out of Wait, our own pockets. You, 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 do, you do what? I do Rhino Charge as well. Yeah, participate or? Participate. I participate okay. in Rhino Charge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I know them. Who do I know from Rhino Charge? Pink Horns? The Pink Horns, yeah, the ladies. My yeah. friends, shout yeah, out yeah. to them. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Well done, they, they yeah. did very well. Liza. So, and, yeah. the, and the squad, yeah. So. Well, <laughs> we're the Charging Hippos. Ah, um, okay. So, yeah. yeah, anyone who would like to uh, find the Charging Hippos. Yeah. Last year we won the Spirit of the Charge Award, yeah. which means that uh, we have, um, yeah, which is probably one of the most prestigious awards that you can win at the, at the Charge. And, and you see, that's the same thing. Like, uh, Rhino Charge is like a really, I think it's one of like the biggest, like probably car, car, yeah. car, Motorsport Ca- event, yeah, yeah, motors- yeah, 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 it's a motorsport yeah. event, but still, I don't think it gets highlighted as much as it should be, yeah, I as think much as it as much as it has, like, uh, but do you think it's necessary because everybody I, I, needs I, that extra visibility, I guess, or you guys are just okay on that side? Um, it's a difficult one with Rhino Charge, we mm-hmm. can talk about that maybe, uh, maybe in another, another podcast one, segment, yeah, 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 and I could get <laughs> so, somebody from, <laughs> from Rhino Arc down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't let's, wanna, don't wanna shoot myself in the foot here. So. Let's save that for later, yeah. let's save that for later. But, yeah. um, you know, yeah. so for Rhino Charge, if we're looking for sponsorship, that goes 100% to Rhino Arc. So that's, yeah. that makes sense for you to give me that amount and we pass it on. X amount. And you, and you, get, the, you get the visibility and hopefully, you know, the, the return anyway. Yeah. Um, but with Rally, what I would like to do is raise awareness in sport um, that, or through, through motorsport is that being disabled doesn't mean you can't do whatever you want to do. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's so important because even like when I was talking to like when, when I see it, like even when somebody talks to you, yeah. they can't get that. And then when you said it, I was like, oh, this is important because now it brings a whole different element here because I'm just thinking like even for me, I'm a horrible driver. Yeah. So when you mentioned that, and you said you're in a rally, I was like, yo, I need to meet, I need to meet you, well, I that's need awesome. to meet you. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, look, if we can inspire anybody, it doesn't mean if I can, if I can, um, you know, help somebody along the way in whatever way it happens to be, they've seen me doing something, means that they will go and try it. 
um, brilliant. And it, it, it's not just, you know, the guy who's who's less fortunate or more for anybody. It doesn't matter mm. of your socioeconomic situation. Yeah. It's up here, right? So if you've had it's a mental all, illness. It's all in the mind. If you had a physical injury, if you're depressed or anything like that, it, it you know, it's not even that. Even somebody like yourself, like, hang yeah. a minute, you know, people will look at me and go, right, geez, Sam's doing that. What am I whinging about type thing? And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Because, um, you know, at times I have, I have two, two lady friends and I told them like they're the worst people that I've ever met. And cause both of them, like coincidentally, when I asked them like, yo, uh, what do you like, like to do for fun? One said sleeping. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Sleeping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. imagine. I'm this, saying people. This is a lot of your life. I'm, you I'm just saying, like, you see other people, like, you know, backpacking, going to this country, one country, going yeah. camping, and every Like, there's so much that you can do. Mm. And somebody's telling you, like, their hobby is sleeping. Wow. The other one said the same thing. I told them, like, you're the worst people, like, on earth. Because <laughs> I'm just trying to think if somebody said that to you, yeah. you're like, are you, well, yeah, are you I would, crazy? I would, uh, yeah. You'd be like, are you crazy? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not, I lie, enjoy having a lion, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to yeah. spend my time sleeping. Yeah. yeah but, but so that, that, that's what, what you're saying. It's so important because somebody else will look at you and say like, wow, you're participating in rally. Yeah. You are very positive. How you talk, how you carry yourself. You're talking about all these things that you're doing and stuff. And I think it all starts from here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Look. You know, uh, it's it's a mindset. I've been lucky enough to be put in that mindset by the people that I'm around. I think also, it is you know, so important. You know, they say so important. if you hang around stupid, you become stupid. Fact. So don't hang around Fact. with me too much, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, um, but um, in terms of so, look, uh, other things that I've done and I do. Um, yeah. I, I, I go, okay, I haven't been for a while, but I go rock climbing at, uh, at in the, on the climbing wall at... Uh, really? Yeah. Is it at Parklands or where is it? The one in Diamond Plaza. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you have yeah. a look on my Instagram through uh -huh. there, you'll find a video of wow. me rock climbing. Yeah. Uh, of which Nikhil, you know, he saw me doing it and he went and gave it a crack, so now he does it and, you know, Yeah, because like you're saying, it's just those little things that you're waking up and actually going and doing them, you're enjoying them. Yeah. And you're just like, you know, I'm having fun. Yeah. And you've got to do these things. Yeah, I, I mean, I would ski. Yo, like even uh, listen, was part. I've never done rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to do it everyone, and tag yeah. you. No, because yeah. I always see people do it. And I always kept on saying, like, I'm going to do it. It's I'm going to do fun. it. I'm going to do it. It's so I'm, I'm going to go give it a crack. It. Yeah. Um, I water ski as well. So I bought a special ski from, uh, it was bought for me by an. Water? By water skiing. What's what's that? So you get is it like surfing or the you, you where get, you get pulled? You get pulled behind a boat. You can do that. So I have a special ski that I the little brace on it that I sit on that skis yeah. again. It's on my on my Instagram. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna change like how I'm doing like a lot of my things. The only problem with my with me and why I can do like a lot of extreme stuff it's because I have horrible high eyesight. Um, well, if you can't see what's coming, that's the best thing. Oh shit! No way! <laughs> <laughs> no way! I, I I I love like swimming and stuff. We can give you some goggles, <laughs> and your glasses in behind your goggles. You'll be fine. I, I know. Okay. Yeah. We'll strap, we'll just yeah tape, I'm just guessing. We'll just tape your glasses or, to your or head. Or just customize. But you know, just yeah. you mentioning it, I'm just saying like it's no excuse. I can still do all these things because everyone can do whatever they you know. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. It just starts just with it just starts with your mind. Yeah. I'm guessing and. It's always you know, like making up all these two little excuses here and there. So like you've said, like your main goal, like even for the rally why and why you're doing it, it's also like to just inspire and... It's, it's, it's look, if, if it's more to sort of just raise awareness to anybody oh, out yeah, there that awareness. you can look, you can do this. It yeah. doesn't matter, uh, you know, you can also get involved with whatever sport, whatever, you know, just basically give somebody that nudge that they need yeah. no matter who they are where they are what their situation yeah. if somebody you know, sees somebody less fortunate or somebody in what they perceive as a worse situation than you yeah. doing something you're going to be like well you know what I can actually yeah. do something I can't you know, complain I can about fingers. this I can yeah. I can actually do this um, and yeah that, that's basically what the other, the other side of it that I would like to do and if if you can be a brand ambassador for somebody, uh, then you know, for a company, that's also what I can offer a sponsor. 
is that like it makes you know, sense and that, that's it so i mean my goals in life are, are down the line i'd love to do the dakar rally so that's my four-year plan mm. is to actually go and do that and i met a really inspirational guy last year who who, who kind of gave me um the vision <coughs> that i could do it mm -hmm. um south african guy called joey evans and he broke his back and actually managed to do the Dakar rally on a motorbike. So Joey is 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 being like uh, an eye eye opener for me. Mm -hmm. And when he turned around to me and said, "Sam, your story is ten times more interesting than mine. You should go and do this." And any company that doesn't follow you will be the ones who are that, crying that. four years down the road yeah, that yeah. they didn't support yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also would love to be Kenya's first sort of fully fledged Red Bull. Um, you know, I think I, I, by Red I Bull. think it just we makes, don't have I think Kenya. it makes sense. It just yeah. makes sense. We and even with one. what you're doing, I think it just makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's that's the goal anyway. But let's let's get to the start line next weekend or this weekend, sorry, and yeah. uh, this and weekend. Uh, this weekend, sorry, yeah, and um, and see how we do. Yeah. So apart from that, because um, my podcast is all about like the four pillars of life: okay. health, wealth, love, and happiness. Mm -hmm. And just like from like your story, like and everything that you're talking about. First of all, I can just say, first of all, like, your health is on point. Because <laughs> all the things that you're mentioning, like, at times I feel so lazy doing them. Like, if somebody told me to go and do rock climbing, be like, ah. Talking about skiing and all these this physical activities, basically. But do yeah. you do any other exercises or, like, your, your, your whole thing is, as long as I'm doing, like, sporty things, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, pretty or maybe much. Maybe even food. I, food, food wise, you know, we're lucky we, we, we have, we come from that, that's our business, so I can, you know, eat uh, what I want to eat. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have, uh, um, you know, so, so lucky there, eat, eat well or try and eat as, 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 as well as possible. Yeah. I gym, swim, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You, you go to the gym as well? Yeah, yeah, I'll go to the gym pretty much. I'll try and go See, at least I three mean, or four times a week. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Three or four times a week? Yeah. I'll try. You know, the thing that I... That's more than enough. I know it's more than enough. I heard a health fitness coach who said they go once a, once a week. No, no. <laughs> I, I also find it's my de-stress. You know, at the end of the day, I go at the end of the day and yeah. I do my thing. It helps me forget about work and... Clear, and just clear, clear your clear head. Mind. Yeah, because you have like all these work things and everything like are going on. So I'm guessing it's just figuring out a balance. And what I've said like on the podcast, it's all... I'm always talking to people about uh, balancing like all these things in uh, in your life yeah because you've talked about even just coming from the situation from like 15 15 years old and turning everything around uh you running like the whole uh, restaurant uh business thing you have the rally hobby on the side um let's talk about when it comes to love you talk we've just talked about like how your family has been yeah. really supportive and everything that you know it's made you like get through all these yeah. uh maybe life hurdles and stuff mm -hmm. but we haven't talked about relationship ah. <laughs> ah. but we're just gonna mention it uh how's how's like your dating life or how's dating in nairobi for you uh dating in nairobi are you in any situation uh, right now? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm quite single at the moment. You might get into trouble if, you know, there is somebody who thought of the potential. <laughs> then they're like, ah? You say it like single? Yeah, no, But I'm are you, is it something that's on your, like, priority list? Because you've said, like, you know, some of your friends are, yeah. like, settling down and all this stuff. And you're, like, you're not in a hurry. You're still being, like, your young self. I, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, right, right. It's all about timing, isn't it? Find the, the the if you find the right person and it all works and happy days, uh, yeah. then 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 we'll we'll forge ahead with it. But I I I just yeah. At the moment Do you feel the rush, or you you're like in a place where you're like, if it happens, it happens. But I don't want to keep like put a priority on this. Look, uh, yeah, I don't I don't put a priority on it necessarily. It's yeah. if it's for me, it's got to do with the right person, uh, more so than feeling the rush I think yeah. if you feel the rush then you're just doing you're, it to maybe just, to get validation yeah. from other yeah. people yeah. and I, yeah. I've always said I'll never settle wow wow so I'd you know I'd rather be happy and single 
the miserable and in a relationship, put it that way. That's also inspiring me, you know how? <laughs> not to settle down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying I won't settle down. So if there's the right lady out there, she will just put her hand up and don't be shy. Come and say hello. Yeah. Because I'm terribly shy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, 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 something that So do you believe in like approaching or you'd rather just no, no, be I'm settled and give an eye contact and if the vibe is right, you can have a conversation and... I, yeah, there's... Because even like now, how many love, de- dating in the millennial age and how people used to do it's it, a mess. completely different. Yeah, I don't do the Way. whole, what you call, I don't do the whole... Uh, the Tinder stuff, Tinder the and sliding in the stuff. DMs. I tried it, yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. Ah, it doesn't work. It's, uh, no it's a bloody nightmare. Tinder for me, I've tried it. It just makes yeah. no sense. So what I, I, I... But or even on Instagram, you haven't tried like even sending someone like a message or anything? No, no, I, I just always would assume that that's like m- major weirdo stalker kind of thing happening. Man, that, <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, you, if you think about it, yes. If yeah, you think about so it, yes. Random dude but, but looking at my pictures, yes. sending me yeah. pictures. Yeah, like I like your picture. <laughs> okay, yeah. Cre- true, creepy true. old man business true, going on. True, true. So no, no, uh, no for that. I believe in... Either seeing somebody and just having the, 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 the cojones to go up and talk to them. Yeah. Which helps after you've had a, a skin full of beers. <laughs> or uh, being introduced by your friends. And they're, they're ah, the, that's yeah, yeah. the best that's way. Always the you get validation. Yeah, blah, the blah, validation blah, blah. is always like a plus yeah. to even before you start having so, a conversation. Yeah. But also, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm quite shy. Mm-hmm. Once I'm introduced, I'm fine. Mm. I'll talk and as you can see. But now, just the approaching the my own. I mean, yeah. even for me at times, it's a bit hard for that, but, you know, it's just a leap of faith, man. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, also, which is... Maybe just one slap and you can go on with your life. Yeah, so, something as well that, that I've sort of mentioned to some of my friends, which yeah. they've always been like, oh, yeah. Um, it's also quite scary for the person that I'm talking to. Because mm-hmm. if you imagine, like, if you were... Uh, uh, you're not allowed to kiss me, by the way, I've heard about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I was to come up to you and you were a, you were a lady in a bar or in wherever it was, yeah, the first thing is like obviously they'll they, they they've never been, well very few people have been in that situation. Where yeah, oh in yeah, a chair, in a chair, yeah. And they don't know how to approach it sometimes. And people, you know, get a little bit. They're like, not sure they're not about sure how. Where. Yeah. So it's it's not the same interaction as you would have with an, any normal. Oh bloke who's in a yeah, bar. it's co- it's also very different. It's a complete. So you've got mm-hmm. to be. I am very mindful and respectful of that to other people because mm-hmm. they've also got to give them like a second to just th- adjust to yeah, that. Yeah, they've got to program themselves yeah, yeah, into yeah, that yeah. and dial it in. Mm-hmm. And it's not for everybody, you know. Like mm-hmm. and, you know, everyone has their thing, and they're like, well, yeah, you know, he might be this or he might be that, but I'm mm-hmm. not really into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's mm-hmm. just fair enough. You just yeah. got to you check that box, you get on with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to get hung up on that. But have you so had those situations where like um, most people? Or, are, or how do you go about it though? Like to you, is it something you're like? Eh. Yeah, I'll just I be mean, like, well, whatever. You know, in in my mind, is if you can't deal with it, then yeah, we'll get I on mean, with it. And, yeah, yeah, and you're not somebody that I'm gonna hang out with. I see. That's the thing. I'm just saying, like you're so, your way of thinking about so many things is just so positive, because it's even the way you're still expressing that when it comes to dating, it's the same approach you did with like your hobby with the car. <laughs> And yeah. like just in anything that you're trying to do, you're, you're like, you know, this works for me, I'm doing this. This works for me, I'm doing this. But you haven't said in any part of it that I said like, you know, I, I'm not even going to bother doing this. Like You're like, if I can't, if you're not, if you can't deal with this or this is not what you like, it's okay, but I can still keep on doing my thing. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, 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 I think I so. I mean, I'll always, there's always a compromise. In yeah. fairness, and there's not yeah. to say I'm hard-headed and I will not know you do my thing the whole time. <laughs> but I, I think it's 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 mm-hmm. like you say I'm not going to spend my my life sleeping. There's far too many other things to do in life. No, ah, uh, yeah, come uh, on. and crack come on with on. it. So yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's basically where we're at. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so now just to wrap up the podcast because we've done like it's close to an hour. Yeah, I'm guessing we're getting to a few minutes to an hour. Yeah. So let's not just push it way too no, far. No. We can always Fair do enough. another we'll segment later on. So sure. if you, so this is the last question. Like I normally like ask all my guests. Yeah. Um, if what's the one thing you'd think right now that basically in life you're thinking like, if I achieve this. I think I'd feel like a sense of like 
a lifetime achievement. Like maybe it's ha- seeing your kids mm. run around the house, run around you. Maybe it's a beautiful wife. Maybe it's holding up the Dakar trophy. Maybe it's like what what what's that one thing you think that would give you at least a sense of like hmm, life has been good to me. Well, that's a big question. Yeah. Um I um I, I that's a massive question. Yeah. I don't know. I, I everybody's think always like but yeah. Yeah, yeah. you you yeah. found the question that <laughs> yeah. everybody, yeah. Yeah. No, it's I think it's a combination of things uh, when I look on it. It would be to look back on things and go, um, you know, was I a good person? Uh, do I have good people around me still? Uh, do I have family around me? If they're my kids or my brother's kids or, you know, my friend's kids, um, you know, I'm not materialistic necessarily, so I'm not too hung up on, you know, do I have a nice house? Do I have, a, you know, this? Do I have that? Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Um, it's more... Yeah, that, 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 that sort of environment that you're in at the time uh, when yeah. you look back on it. And if you've made a difference to anybody, and I think that's, like I said, coming through, well, you know, have I made a difference to other people? Have I, you know, not necessarily financially have I made somebody's life better? Have I done this? Have I just changed somebody's life in some way, shape or form? And if I've done that, mm-hmm. then then great. Or if you, you know, um, whether that's my niece, nephew, uh, somebody else's kid, yes, somebody's grandpa, I don't know. Yeah. That would be where I'm at. Wow. See, like, even the way you've mentioned, it's just in line to my podcast. <laughs> Balancing out the four pillars of life. So, ladies and gentlemen, just um, I'll post details on... Or where, where can people find you before I just wrap it uh, wrap um, this up? So, geez, uh, so people can find me... Uh, I've like got on your inst- social platforms? Yeah, social platforms. I've got an Instagram uh, mm-hmm. profile. Um, do you want me to tell you what it is? I need to yeah. What it is. yeah, yeah. I, it's SamJet79. Sam Jet seventy nine. Yeah, Sam okay. Jet seventy nine. Okay. Uh, that's probably the best. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put yeah, it oh, on great. the tag. Yeah. And then I have a Facebook page as well. Yeah. But, uh, probably that's Instagram's. like personal. Let's, yeah. That's let's personal. let's stick with Instagram. Instagram is the way but forward. But you should yeah. start like a YouTube because like you're very well spoken and stuff. Because you just never know. Because and even with a lot of guests, I'm always telling them like now for YouTube, it's all about. Um, just you'd be surprised with the kind of people you'll connect with because okay. somebody will just send you one message even though you had like five views in that video and then you're like ah i keep doing this and then before you know it like a lot of other people are just connecting with you in so many different levels mm-hmm. and you pull in just like the people who are interested in what you're doing you'd be surprised with like even just your rally thing, if it's rock climbing, if it's the restaurant business and stuff, because I mean, like even in Kenya, how many foodies are there and everything? But there's so many other things you can connect with when it comes to people. Yeah. So I mean, the social media platforms also very important. Well, I'll take your advice on that because I have yeah. no idea. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll put all his tags and everything, like information or maybe an email, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you yeah. my, my email address. Yeah, as well. I'll put, I'll put there, it yeah. down like on the description. So if yeah. you need to reach out to to him, you can always just Please like do. you know yeah. contact him and everything. So, ladies Please and do. gentlemen, it's been real. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for and having me. you know, like let's let's do something. Definitely, like I said, if you're uh, if you're available, we'll get you down to the yeah. the, the rally. If Listen. not, then Listen. we'll do another one at some other point. You tell me. Well, well let's figure it out with the dates and everything cool. and the time. Done. Perfect. So, right. for anybody who's listening, make sure you subscribe to the iTunes podcast, the Kiss Capades, the Kiss Capades podcast on iTunes, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and all other social media platforms. Because every single week we keep dropping a new episode and snippets during the week. So thanks, Sam. Appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Yeah.